Hey guys, welcome to LG Overdrive. This is episode three. I am the host, Tae Young Buck. With me today, I have Dudley Do Right. <laughs> Look, I'm back and I'm not dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see that you're not dead, Dudley. <laughs> Some days. Also with us, we have I'm fourth line worthy. What's up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also with us, we have Mackie. How you guys doing? And last but not least, we have Notorious Fat. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> so we're going to kick start it off right away this week, and we're going to send it over to Fourth Line, who's got our team of the week this week. So our team of the week this week was San Diego. They went 8-1. Uh, and one, And when I, when I first heard it, I was like, okay, San Diego, this is going to be like the uh, – the usual, they played an easy division, but San Diego had a hard week, and the only thing they lost to was Stockton. They beat teams like Ontario, Rockford. If we consider that like you know a good team. They beat the Eagles, the Barracudas, Moose. So it's like everyone they played, you know, they're like good. They're all good teams. But the funny thing is, is after a three and zero week by Dangle and Doctor something, I can't. Let me pull up his name here so I can tell you exactly who it was. Uh, Dr. Dangleson, who they played us too, and that's why like, I, I remember watching them, and they were pretty good players. They both got called up that, right after that game. They went 3-0, and so it's like as soon as like, a team's about to do, like, go 8-1, and they lose two key players. And I don't know if that was their top line, but they look like a pretty good line to me. So it's just kind of like another team that's going to slowly, I think, lose their players to the NHL team. So, but still a good week, 8-1. and I don't know who they play this week, though. They're coming in this week, so they're just in the playoffs now. Oh, five points in, so they must have came out of the uh, basement. Yeah, somewhat. All right, I'm gonna send it now over to Mackie, who's got our shitter of the week. You guys know how much I love shitters. Well, our shitter of the week <laughs> this week was unfortunately the Toronto Marlies. Um. They didn't play a set division. They played a mix of both East divisions, but they did have, in their defense, kind of a rough week. Um, they ended up going 1-7-1, one, and one, which is awful as far as anybody's concerned. Um, they lost to Hartford, which it should be a gimme. Uh, they also lost to Belleville, another gimme, but the rest of their week was against uh, pretty top teams. They played Laval, uh, Providence, Wilkes-Barre, Hershey, Rochester, and Binghampton, so most of the big teams from the East-North and some of the ones from the Atlantic. So you can't really fault them. But that's pretty bad. Like, I'm not even going to go into stats, but they dropped all the way down to Belleville's last place spot. They got so worse every week. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they progressively got worse, and now their last 10, they're 1, 8, and 1. Somebody quit, didn't they, too? Uh, Murph had to step down. Murph. I know they yeah, almost stepped down. Uh, and that's not exactly nice. <clears throat> so, um, Dream Killer got, got Dream moved. Dream Killer, that was who it was. Uh, they did claim a couple people off. Uh, or they placed uh, Chenzo on waivers. Nick also got removed. That's one of their better D man. Yeah, that's who. Because there was that, some. That doesn't help at all, especially losing a D this season. Because every every GM doesn't want to trade their D. And nobody's waving their good D. Um, <laughs> not helpful. <laughs> Especially when it's your first line D, man. So it didn't help them. Like, they were definitely playing with the deck stacked against them. But you got to win the gimme games. Like, if you guys know your deck, the deck stacked against you and you're not going to win the biggies against, like, Big Hampton and Providence, who shut them out 9 nothing. Um, you got to put your good lines against the shit teams and just try and get some wins rather than getting blown out and shut down every game. It's the best way to do it, especially when you're a bottom team, is get yeah. your top team in against bad people. Who cares if you're scrub hunting? Guarantee yourself three wins. See if your other lines can get some more wins. And you're probably going to have a four or five win every week at least. Exactly. Just If you're in the basement, this goes for all the basement teams right now. If you're in the basement, yeah, don't keep putting your top line. What, what was that again? Repeat? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is this is putting your juice on. Yeah, if you're in the basement, basement, you know, yeah, put your top top line because your top line, if you're in the basement, doesn't match up against the Manitobas and and the Clevelands and and 
maybe Lehigh Valley because I don't know how they're in first. I don't know. That, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> I don't know how that comes in first, but don't, play, don't waste your top line. Use your top line to get some guaranteed points and hope oh, your good, second good. and third can. Looks like Charlotte. Yeah. That's what, one, even for like any team almost like that's a strategy where it's like I don't like to talk about like what I, how I try to do to win on my weeks so like oh I want to win our weeks but it's like how does nobody view like I get top line versus top line but why not solidify yourself and to know where you're gonna win games and then put a line in against a team that's like maybe win <laughs> or maybe not win but always guarantee yourself why you always gotta try to like line match well sometimes exactly. availability doesn't help well yeah <clears throat> availability obviously but like. He's, most of our third line, like my third line is fucking crazy. But let's face it, availability, someone's going to make it if it's a shit team. I don't care. Everyone's availability is fine uh, if they're playing a the shitter. Uh, yeah, uh, if I'm playing Syracuse, oh, look at that. I'm available. Oh. <laughs> I got no problems filling in my games when I'm playing bottom teams. I'm telling you that right now. I don't lie. I, I skipped my basketball game last week because I wanted to. <laughs> it's like point night. I'm in. Yeah, I was yeah, like, ooh, another team coming up. Speed, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 no, but for real though, like if if you're struggling and you know a line struggling, like this is a game where if you're bad, just do the greasy shit and you'll, you'll work. Like my third line, they're not they're not good some wise, unfortunately. Unfortunately, they're not the best front. Wow, line. Just, it, the bus is just running over at these guys for you. They're not I the mean, best some wise. <laughs> just like let me back this shit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're greasy. Like they, they know how to work the game. So I have no problem throwing them up against fucking the good teams while I take those points. Yeah, ready, yeah, I have no problem with it. My my third line took uh took Lehigh Valley to overtime, hit the crossbar on an empty net, and it went down the other way, and the other team scored. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, moving on now, we're gonna send it over to Dudley, who's got ah! his top ten of the week. Ah! Okay, I'm back. All right, so um, so last week. Left- Last week I wasn't here uh, due to some things. Uh, I got deported, and now I'm back. Um, so I needed a little help on this one. So my buddy, uh, Notorious uh, Fat, uh, as they call him, even though that's a little generous, um, <laughs> helped me out with a category on a top ten list, and it's top ten reasons why we haven't gotten our LG Media shirts yet. So... Yeah, I haven't gotten oh, mine yet. I was like, I'm for sure getting so, it. So, so being the good guy Notorious is, and me being kind of lazy today, uh, I kind of put together a mix of my jokes and his jokes. So here we go. Top ten reasons why we haven't gotten our LG Media shirts yet. Here we go. Number ten, Brody misspelled the names on the shipping labels. Uh, number nine, Rammer gets his first for hut packs. All of the got all of the t-shirts instead. Um, number eight, Ristol only got his because Brody secretly delivered it to his door. I got mine. Uh, no one cares. Uh, <laughs> number, number seven, accidentally left it in Brody's fire truck. Um, number six, LG AHL Insider intercepted the packages and are holding them for ransom in exchange for beef patties. Um, number five, thought Dudley was Arab, <laughs> thought Dudley was Arab and it got sent to the Middle East. <laughs> Number four, Brody won't deliver them until Faces admits he's really retired from media. Uh, number three, ran out of fabric, making Notorious' his shirt. Um, number two, got mixed up with the 2017 World Series champs LA Dodgers shirts, and now they're on their way to Africa. And the number one reason why we haven't gotten our media shirts yet, Buck got them all and wears one every day like a cartoon character. I could actually, I could actually see the last one. Is that sad? I can see that. No, uh, yeah, I don't think he goes outside. I think he's just wearing the sweater to cover it up. But yeah, Buck, what's under the sweater? Yeah, you don't want to know. Better yeah, question: Why are you not wearing the free shirt? Yeah, because it's in the washer right now. Where'd that you wear it? Seven days. And and why would that ever need to be changed or or you know clean? You wear it once for one hour. Yeah. Take that shit off. The better question is: Where did you wear it before? Here, on the show. A week ago. Yeah, and then my cat laid down on it. You do your laundry once a week. Yeah, Sunday nights. Yeah, same here. Sunday nights. Normally. 
What night is it today? Saturday. I decided to okay. do it earlier. I just, I just wanted to make sure we were on there. Wait, 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 okay. wait, wait, wait. Since when, since when did Faces become like Mr. Detective over here? Like, <laughs> What's Crass with that is, face? Yeah, Crass isn't the in mouse? here, so you don't need to be Mr. Detective, okay? Right. Fun fact, Crass still hates me to this day. All right, moving on. We're now going to send it to... Um, Notorious with his new segment, Life in the Cage. Yeah, yeah. So Life in the Cage is back in video form. Ooh. So uh, for those of you who may have seen it, thank you, Dudley. For those of you who may have seen it uh, last season, I was writing the article every week. Uh, it was pretty, I guess, extensive, uh, where I would profile you know, quite a few goalies during that week and what they had done. Uh, obviously, because we're kind of restricted for time here, I'm going to reduce that. Uh, so I'm just going to sort of have three categories, one goalie in each category. Again, it's just for fun. Don't get upset, okay? Don't send me any death threats or anything. I, I don't want to deal with it. Okay? I'm already triggered, Notorious. Oh, you're not even a goalie. If Tater exactly. is a goalie. Triggered. If Tater is uh, a I'm ready. So I used ready to like to finish it. with the, uh, the, my favorite category, which was the cock hammer. Um, I'm going to start with the cock hammer this time. Uh, I'm allowed to say cock hammer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so the cock hammer this week is uh, normally handed out to a very extraordinary player uh, for that week that uh, may have displayed to me things that would mean he deserves to have his cock smashed with a hammer. <laughs> um, just just, this this yeah. week's gonna be a little different. Uh, what I've decided to do is I'm going to hand this to an entire team. I'm giving this uh, this car cover this week to the Charlotte Checkers. Uh, um, there's a few reasons. Okay, now I could have picked them just because of the record this week, which wasn't stellar. Um, I could have picked them this week because the goalie stats weren't great, right? Because um, that's kind of the reason I do this. Uh, I could have even picked them for the fact that they've banned like seven players this season, and maybe that's the problem. I don't know. Um, that's not really fair. Maybe they had problems I don't know about. So I, I, you know, I'm not going to do that either. So what I decided is I'm just going to sort of spotlight all these reasons, and for that reason, they, they do receive a cock hammer. I'm going to oh. lightly hit them with the hammer, though. I don't want to smash their cock. I'm just going to lightly hit them because I'm thanking them for being as bad as they are. They've kind of taken the spotlight off Tucson a bit. No one's really talking about us being second worst in the league. So thank you, Charlotte. I appreciate it. All right, so that's our cock hammer this week. Oh, shit. It's really weird to see that, though, because like, usually bad teams don't ban people. Or They're doing God's work. I don't know all the situation. I didn't have time to pour over all the notes and start interviewing people. It's just it, I wasn't putting in the effort for well, that. Their GM went uh, went AWOL. He got banned. Uh, he Come actually. On. They got eight new people. Eight, eight new eight people. They're seventeen new... roster. They're in this. this but uh, they're doing God's work, banning the assholes. I'll tell you that much. It's it's all should be also should be noted that in three weeks of the season they've managed to go through five goaltenders. So that's uh, that's pretty impressive in itself. That's uh, you're burning those fuckers up like they're kindling. You know, you need to put a log in the fire and let that <laughs> shit burn for a little bit because. You're just burning up all the little twigs right now. Find they're a like, log. They're like Vegas in real life where they got their, like, Cam Loops Blazer goalie up there now. They're a Cam Loops uh, prospect because just going through all their goalies. It's also <laughs> worth noting they've only won one game in the last two weeks, and that was against Laval and Gibbsy yeah. and Rex to five scrub hunting. Yeah. Throwing so, that uh, moving on to my next category, which is the studs. Studs, of course, a player that uh, deserves to be spotlighted this week because they had a really good week. This week, we're going to talk about uh, Grandpa Puff 420 from the Stockton Heat. Had a really good week. Went 4-0. Had a 91.3 save percent and a .99 goals against average, which is pretty fucking nice. Uh, that include one shutout. Um, as best I can tell, he's an AHL rookie. I think he played one game a couple seasons ago with me in Charlotte when I was there. Um, looking back uh, on his uh, – or pardon me, he's – Currently on fire. He's won 10 straight games over the last two weeks. So he went 6-0 last week, 4-0 this week. I'm thinking the opposition is having some trouble penetrating the zone just because there's a lot of fucking ego going on over there in Stockton. So it's like this thick fucking wall at the blue line, and people are hitting it like jello, right? And they're just, like, stuck in it. So it's really hard to move the puck once you hit that ego wall. Um, yeah, so basically. I assume that's helping a lot. They you call know, that the Euro Halfer wall. It's just, uh, hey, I don't think you're good. Stay out. 
It's possible. Oh, like maybe they have maybe they have bouncers at the blue line. I don't know what it is. I haven't uh, I haven't witnessed it myself. Um, from looking at his where was where was that last season? Last season he was in the CHL. <laughs> That's where he belongs. I can't, I can't tell you. Or you're a half or yeah, fuck that guy. But I know I, I played with his grandpa guy in club. Holy fuck, is he good? Like we were coning the D man and just sending cross creases or going short side. He would stop everything. It's He's funny because dude, Jesus is like that too. Like they got a really good goalie tandem, and that yeah. that you know that team is like a Rochester last year where they got or last season where you have two good goalies and I put like I, I haven't played grandpa before but Jesus in club too same thing it's like it takes so long to get that guy to get goals past him so it's like good tandem over there man and grandpa is good I mean his thing in the bidding thing was I'm the best and as long as his batteries don't he's living up to it as long as his batteries don't die I guess so <laughs> I was looking over his stats from past seasons where he was in the CHL. It was nothing really special. Pretty average stats. Nice, nice stuff. Um, but I'm assuming that his prescription for medicinal marijuana has gone through because his glaucoma seems to have just cleared right up. No, nah, man, that's so, Adderall. So what, what Grandpa Puff 420 needs to do is he needs to puff, puff, pass to our next guy, which is in our duds. So for the duds, for the duds, <laughs> oh, we have a uh, – Venom two zero nine nine or two oh nine nine. I don't know what it is. He's with the Syracuse Crunch. Uh, he's went one two and one last week. Sixty eight point eight percent save and a four point nine nine goals against average. What's that like, Buck? <laughs> Anyways, um, but it's not all. It's not all bad news. It's not all bad news. Uh, this this is a bounce back week for him. Okay, last week in week two, he was zero and three with a five point three six goals against average. And uh, so saying this is a bounce back week is not really good for him. It's certainly not good for Syracuse. Uh, the Syracuse needs to go and get to their nearest poison control center and find the antidote for this venom. Okay. <laughs> and if they don't, they're probably going to die a slow, painful death. That's their uh, AGM, so isn't it? That's their but, uh, but I do have something special just for venom. Okay, so I'll get that. Just hold on. Oh boy, what is he doing? <laughs> oh man. So what we have right here is the amazing I suck paper bag. It'll be given to the dud each week. And what I'm going to do is on the back, I'm going to sign the person's name. It's going to be like a trophy. You guys can all have it for a week when the season's over. We'll pass it around. It's going to be great. Oh, wow. Well, I know I'm going to that one at some point. I'm wow. gonna tell Pedro to throw. You it. almost got it this week, Buck. <laughs> Dude, mail it to Venom. He'll probably get it before we get our shirts. Oh, <laughs> oh zinger! <laughs> oh, Yo, the fact is, like, the notorious even having a better season than I am. So that ain't good. Is he really? Yeah. Yes. That's right. Our save percentage is exactly the same, but his goals against average is like. Point four. Uh, yeah, but who plays right, more games though? He's got won one game. I've I've played more games. Yeah, we've won games. I'm surprised. Yeah. I found the problem <laughs> in Bakersfield. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have a goalie last week. <laughs> Jeez Louise! And that's it. Uh, that's it for life in the cage this week. Over to All you, right. Buck. I'm gonna send it over to Faces, who's gonna cover Risto's AIDS with Risto this week. And he's gone. He went to get another bottle of tomato juice to drink. <laughs> Regardless, he had his segment next. There he is. So, he got that okay. V8 trying to set his diet straight. Yeah. Uh, Too bad it doesn't help him grow a beard. Jesus. And we're <laughs> back from the break. <laughs> <laughs> I need more alcohol. All right. So, yeah. I'm sending it over to you, Faces, to cover AIDS with Risto this week. AIDS with Risto. Well... This isn't uh, a this week thing. Uh, it applies for the last two seasons. Uh, but AIDS with Risto, because Risto is not here, as you see. No Risto. It's about our, our friend, Hockey Town Hero Nye. You see, he's a legend now. <laughs> he's got the bottle. <laughs> he's doing the bottle. <laughs> this guy's got a prop. <laughs> 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 you hockey town here or not? You're so dedicated to playing an LG. 
I gotta say, if I was a GM in the CHL, that dedication fucking impresses me, I tell you. That you, uh, <laughs> you not only are on Reddit buying second tags so you can get into LG without Brody knowing, you've also waited six months, and on the day your ban expired, you went to the CHL chat box to try and talk shit. I gotta tell you, man, two straight years. Two straight years of buying gamer tags and making gamer tags. You think you'd uh, you take the hint? Yeah, like just, just it. literally stop. At one point, it was like just serve your ban. He would have got back, but now he's fucked himself. It, the, he got banned. It was just a season manager's ban. That was it. He just had a season. So, what did he do with that? He went and second tagged. It, was, it, was, it was in week four or five. He got banned. He had. Three weeks to wait. Four weeks to wait. That was it. He would have been back. Would have been talking shit on his actual account. Now he's uh, and if you uh, if you uh, type his gamer tag in on Reddit, you'd be able to find a certain something uh, where he's buying gamer tags. Buying gamer tags. Just That's, to get them banned. Just to get them banned. I don't think he he claims to have an account. NHL right now. Is this now. like a vengeance mission or something? What is he like? He, freaking... he, just, he, he claims that he's going to keep messing up teams until they unban him. It's like, no, you're going to keep messing up teams till GMs realize that you're not going to stay. Per, perhaps we should we should suggest something here and just um, let's maybe try and get him involved with that intervention TV show. We can get him some real help. Like we can all come together as a unit. You know, like we're his friends. And we can, you know, you know, just have a talk with him. Say, you know, your your addiction to LG is hurting us in in this way, and we can each tell about how it's hurting us. And you know, maybe we can get him some help. I don't know. He's but it's like a troubled young man. It's also we, we could all pay him a visit. I mean, uh, Tris has his like geological coordinates. We could just go and hey, man, listen, Alex, you have right. a problem. Yeah, we'll have the let's, intervention, let's and then we'll say, shirt. "Hey, it's a sting operation. You're going to jail." <laughs> let's, let's, let's send him a shirt. He needs one, dude. He lives for uh, league gaming. He needs one. He needs no, one. But, but, leagues. but the other thing is, though, is like, even even like for more CHL gems, like if this guy messes you, don't let him think that you're gonna get away with having him as a second tag because once he gets busted, you get busted, you get banned as well. Like, I don't know why you guys are letting this guy think that, like, he can sneak on to your team. Because as soon as you know, he'll bring someone down with you. And, and that's the thing. Like, sure, there might be some second tags in the CHL. I'm not going to argue that. We all know there is. NHLers that's why he would go there. down there. NHLers are second tagging in the CHL with their friends, whatever. Hockey Town Hero is – they have their eyes out on him. They have a – they have him on there. He's not. He's not even. He's, and he's not even worth the, the the stress of getting busted. Exactly. You're gonna have to worry about what's this idiot doing? Who's he talk to? What's what's he doing on that? Thing? So he's like a predator, that? pretty much. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he's he's claimed that he, only one person knows that he has a another tag playing in the CHL and is the top team in the CHL. I wonder if it's that Mr. Angelo guy that is the agent <laughs> for all these CHLers. He's a funny fact. He's not actually in the league at all. That's actually a second tag, and it's a GM from the team that has all those players just trying to get away with uh, being able to make sure his players don't get caught. I mean, the, the CHL is probably full of second tags. I'm actually really curious to know like who are, who is second tagging down there. I've always been awesome. curious. Well, that's a lot of people would be interested in Dude, those, that kind of I know, because like when I like go through and I look to see how I want to draft, I believe everybody who has signed up for one season with a really good stat record never signed up again. It's a second tag. That's all oh, they yeah. did it for. Yeah. And then you just wonder, like, who was that? Yeah, absolutely. We're opening, but, uh, up, we're opening up a can of worms, which means we're all going to get uh, kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this, one, this one's for Hockey Town Hero. You know, you keep doing you Keep wasting your money. Uh, okay. Aren't you yeah. supposed to pour one out for him on the carpet? <laughs> yeah. I'd pour one out, but I like alcohol too much, and I'm not going to lose. So isn't that why that one guy, Mick Deadly, in the CHL got banned was, was because of Hockey Town Hero? Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. Another one. That's what I'm yeah, saying. He was on, he was on my team. On my team. So that's just, that's Angel Twisto. Just GMs, stop being fucked. Ah! Oh, that's a boy. And, Good, uh, job, Good job. Oh, we have to censor now? Oh, gosh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just... 
let him keep wasting his money. That's his. Uh, like, if he's he can't privately get gamer tag. Now. Yeah, you know, at first it's like holy, holy, but like now it's actually AIDS. Now it's literally just, just dumb. Like, this has been what 12, 13 times. He's like, not five, even getting a game in now without it, without him getting busted. No, he got he got assigned like, and then two days later he was removed. It was like, yeah, we know it's you. Bye. Damn. <laughs> and another AIDS. Yeah, it, it's 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 triggered. Moving on to the last topic, I'm going to send it back again over to Faces. He's got the trades of the week. So there wasn't, a, a, as of right now anyways, there's only a couple of ones for one. You know, not really relevant trades. But there was three that were kind of shake-ups that'll make kind of an impact in my opinion. Uh, so I'll run down those three because nobody else is really doing big moves right now still somehow for some reason. If you're in last, have you, you might yeah, want to. Have, make... you, have you tried to talk to the GMs this season? Fair enough. I... <laughs> you're correct on that. I've been trying to make a move for three weeks, and I still don't even want to do it because I'm tired of the GMs. So I, I don't blame you guys. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. It's... If you're in last place right now, you might want to do something. RA is not going to help you. So trades this week. First trade. It's going to be the one between Iowa and Grand Rapids. Uh, Grand Rapids traded KSP, average boy, oh no fear, Boys. and Osiris to Iowa for I Sell Lessons, Papa Adams, Rebel, and an angry brown guy. How the hell did Austin pull that off? Oh my gosh. Don't ask. Who's Austin? It, the AGM. Of Iowa? A- yeah. Hey, oh yeah, I, I have no idea, but you know. Just... See, the thing is, is like, I could see that happening. Murray loved KSP and average boy when he was on my team in season 26. I, so I, I kind of figure if that trade was going to go, oh. like I'm not surprised it's Iowa. <laughs> this this trade breakdown is uh, is as much as a breakdown as it is a me calling out a KSP and average boy for being pansy. Um, now offensively, Iowa really upgraded with those two. Huge, like it's huge. Uh, it's not even close to Paul. And Adams. way better availability. I saw lessons does not have good availability. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's huge for them. And uh, if KSP and Average Boy stop being pansies and stop requesting trades before they even play a single game just because the team is bad in the standings, um, you know, they're, had, they're good to fucking play together. Like, that's what they want. You're 9.75 million. You're not going to play together anywhere else. They're stopping pansies. Um, but they did end up giving a Angry Brown guy for a D that they instantly dropped in Osiris, which <laughs> that's like six trades in three weeks for Osiris. That's not good. Why is he not good? Um, I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> I'll leave it at he was on the suicide, he, he was on the suicide line in Hartford. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so last that, season, yeah, but that was last season. It's a new game. Um, he did get better at the end of last season, so I'll give him that. But giving up angry brown guy for basically nothing could come back to hurt them because he was one of the better D in Iowa before they uh, they got rid of him. But that's that's basically it for this trade. There wasn't a lot of differences, just slight upgrades for Iowa. Huge for the forwards, but the third forward they got, oh, no fear, not so much. I think that was a little bit of a downgrade. Um, but with those two together, if they stop crying and they just play, like that could be huge for Iowa. Chemistry is everything in this game. Exactly. So mm-hmm. they have that chemistry now, and that that's huge. So it's, it's, a, it's not a big upgrade, but it is a pretty good upgrade for Iowa to move the guys that ask for trades for – a huge, huge pickup. Oh, jeez. Second, second trade of the week is uh, between Laval and our very own fourth line worthy in Manitoba. It's uh, Rex Defying Gilbsey go to Manitoba for Moose X92, I.I. Fox, and Sensei Drop Shot. Um, one, Fox has AIDS availability. Everybody knows that. Uh, two moose by his stats. I haven't played with him. He was on like your third line, right? Not very good. He was dropping sure games that should have been one. <laughs> That's also a downside. Um, so while moose was one of the weak points in Manitoba, they got rid of Fox's eight availability, but I don't think this will turn out to be that right of a trade. Um, Gilsey and Rexify do have good stats as well as the good chemistry together, which chemistry is everything in this game. I'm not gonna. Not their cousins. I'm not going to go against that. They talk outside of the game. They know what they're going to do. They've literally only played bottom teams so far. Literally, only bottom teams. 
fucking scary. The last and two Gilby's, weeks. Gilby's availability is not good either. And like, yeah. So, but the last two weeks, we talked about this. Charlotte's won one last one game. The last two weeks. Guess who it was against? Well, it was against Gilbsey. Rectifying Gilbsey. So, uh, it's, but here's here's the other thing though. I'm not gonna knock Lavelle, but I'll tell you, I can promise you our decor is way better than that. And they're they're off, they're offensive players, so it's like. I don't know how much I can say with the trade, the idea, or like the process of it, but every everybody I try to talk to about trades for anything, everyone knew I was over cap. Everybody like, and I didn't. I had eight forwards this whole time, and this was Sensei's last week where something had to happen because I can no longer ECU him, and my cap's so close that I couldn't even send somebody down and call him up and still be because he's like 250k difference. I couldn't do it, so I had to do something. And that's the thing. This did open up a good amount of cap for you, but the Fox alone is worth more than Rexify and Gilbsey. So you dropped a good amount of cap, and Fox is, let's be honest, completely overpaid. Um, we needed a third line. That This is why I needed a third line, because like last season, the season – well, not really the season before, mainly last season we were built. I would say we had two first lines, no third line. How did we lose? Our third line didn't win us a game. And as yeah. soon as one of your other lines slip a loss – you have nothing. So, exactly. I, so I needed to add the depth. And that and that's why I gave you guys the this was before you guys obviously got Lusky. Um so you didn't really need the cap anymore. Like the um but I'll give you I gave the edge of the moose on this one because they cleared up a lot of that cap so they could shore up the rest of the team and, and really build a huge contender. I'll I'll see like well yeah. like you don't know. I know Gilbsey's availability is not good. And I I know like I'm not a, a points guy, right? I'm making trades off of chemistry and then making trades off of, you know, like kind of who they're playing. So, like, I saw, like, what they're who they're playing against and, and whatnot. So, we'll see how that goes here. But maybe the – it was just by chance because apparently Gilby's availability is bad and, like, he has, like, he works on certain days. So, maybe it's only because, like, those just by chance – or those are the games they're putting them in because maybe Laval is doing it like you put a good line in against a bad team to solidify a win. It could be that, but like, I can give you guys the edge because you shored up a lot. Yeah, yeah. You got the cap to shore up your weak points and you got a good second and third line duo for the team. So I'll give it to you guys on that one. You guys, you guys can hug later. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on to the third and final trades. This is the three-way deal. Now, I, I didn't put a lot of one-for-ones in, so but this is one of them. We're talking about fourth line shoring up his team. Uh, this deal was uh, Dolan. In, in the basics, Dolan went to Manitoba. Neil went to Hershey. CT83 went to San Antonio. Now, this could be good or bad for literally everybody. Uh, <laughs> everybody that could have lost in this, everybody could have won. Uh, Dolan is S2 and Puck Stopper, for those of you. <laughs> Who don't pay attention? <laughs> uh, but I, I talked to him before he signed up, and his availability is really bad this season to the point where he didn't. He, the only day he knows he can play is Sunday. Every other day, he doesn't know if he can play until the day of that game. So unless you have nine, nine out of nine uh, D-man, which I'm assuming Fork does in Lingros, if he when did he tell you that? Uh, before he signed up last week. He told me nine for nine. Rip. I, I, I think your cat faces has uh, some input on this subject. Yeah, his input uh, the general I don't know. Maybe he just meant I, I, he didn't say anything to me about bad availability. To me, we, he specifically told me, but okay. But I don't know. So we'll write that one down. Now, now Force is like worried a bit. <laughs> yeah, but CT, CT's availability was bad too. Yeah, then I'm going to get that. Don't worry. But on the flip side of that, CT – was one of your worst D-man stat wise. I mean, he was and availability wise, clearly. Um, and he also plays in force or D-man. Like, why, dude? Why? That's what everybody says. I don't mind it. It's like a it's defensive like, defenseman. No, man, that's like playing this game on hard mode. That's like with a blind yeah. on. Like, you can't catch anybody. You can't do anything. It's stupid. Why? Why? Hey, a he's one a human being. Let him do what he wants. Enforcer. I beat a one freaking club all the time. That doesn't say anything. I know. That, that, that actually speaks bad about the man. I'm shit at center. I'm shit at center. That speaks bad about freak. 
Um, and then there's Neil, who, while having his moments as a good D, is a damn great skill wise to Dallin. Let's be real. Neil, Neil is crazy from what I heard. Let, let's be real. No. Neil was in the 11, first game of the season for Neil, 11 to 1 loss. Mm-hmm. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. And I know that I know that Gerby was trolling. We all know he was, but let's put that in quotes. If you know your center is trolling and he's not covering his guy, you don't keep skating backwards. You try and cover for him. And Neil, he clearly doesn't have that ability to adjust. So as soon as the game goes downhill, like there's a detriment to his team. So like everybody, if Neil shows up or Neil has a center who can cover Neil's shitty play. Hershey could have won. I mean, they did get Nolan for free from RA, so uh, grabbing a D-man for him if he has shit availability is already good for them. So good on them. They made him, They made the most out of getting him an RA. And most teams will just let the guy sit in their training camp uh, while team asks for trades and say, nope, nope, sorry, nope, 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 can't have him. Nope. That is actually a big point, though. There hasn't been like a lot of big trades this, this uh no, nobody, nobody wants to give up their first line. And what's next week? Week five? So it's like four. two more four. weeks? Four. So three more weeks until trade deadline? Yep. And on deadline, it is next to impossible to get anything. No, because nobody you, wants to trade you might, You might end up seeing a lot more activity within the next two weeks. Because I think people, so. People, people are going to try and shore up and see what they can get. Are you all these little no, trades? Not and even I, that. I can say for myself, you know, these little trades, you want to see what you can do with what you have and move some other pieces around. But then, you know, give it the next week or so, people are going to start blowing it up. But for the, all those, uh, the other thing is, is like, please don't think that waiting until deadline, you're going to get the best deal for people because you aren't and you do not want to be stuck making a regretful trade. I've done it two seasons in a row where I fucked myself. Exactly. Let's be realistic here. There are teams that blow themselves up at the beginning of the year and they fuck themselves over. There are teams that wait too long, and I, I personally, I'm I'm not rushing through a trade. I'm not going to trade with somebody for TCs. I'm not going to trade somebody for nothing. If you've had a guy on the block for three weeks, a lot of people have. Let's be realistic here, folks. And you are trying to trade him for first line guys, and nobody's yes. thinking, nobody's laughing you off. Yet come down to earth. If you wait till deadline, odds are I'm going to have a guy that was RA to me. I'm just going to wave a motherfucker and call him up. It's like somebody's on the block for like three weeks. Then you put something on the block or like listening to or like, oh, willing to trade. And then it's like first person message you is that person who's got that guy on the block for like three weeks and they offer it to you. And you're like, really, man? Like if I wanted him, I would have asked about him three weeks ago. Yeah. Exactly. If, if you're actively moving a motherfucker, <laughs> if you're actively moving a man and I go out and I put, I'm like, you know what, man? I'm listening to offers on my first line guy because I need to shake things up because we're losing to Charlotte. We're losing to Hartford. I'm I'm about to drink some bleach right now. I don't want the guy that's been on the block since day one. So, so it's either going to be, if you wait till to trade the deadline, I'm going to have someone to RA to me by then. A lot of people are. And in, in the NHL, too, though, is like, it's not our thing, but I watch the NHL trades just to see what's going on. And nothing there either. No, nobody's trading this season, so people are eventually going to come down to earth and go... Well, other than Poopy, but everyone Poopy trades for and then he just gets banned. Quits and they come back, so whatever. Snoopy's just trading to fuck other teams over. Mm-hmm. I just want to say the last mm-hmm. couple of minutes have been the Faces and Fourth Line show, sponsored by Geico. So... Thank you. Thank you. Come on, come on. <laughs> so well, sponsored by Kamado, dude. What? I'm just putting my opinion in, dude. That's all. No, it's good. By the way, you're putting your opinion in. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, dude, that gets me here. The scratches on my phone force. Evan, <laughs> Evan, did you see the scratches? No, but for real though. For real though, um, depending on Dolan's availability, if he is 909, whatever. Um, I gave this one skill wise to Manitoba. Forrest has been known to deal with some AIDS availability in his day. Uh, so during the regular season, that skill is going to be a huge thing for them. Availability wise, depending on Dolan, if Dolan is nine out of nine, like he says, uh, I'll give that to Manitoba. If he's not, I'll give it to Hershey because they took that guy that was three games availability sometimes and flipped him for Neil. That's a good move for them. And then the big loser here is San Antonio. You got an enforcer D man who couldn't that's, win games on Manitoba. Let's that's, be honest. Uh, that's their buddy, and so that's why like I couldn't trade him anywhere else though, right? It's like. I didn't mind him. I thought he was okay. I played club with him and stuff. But his availability is hard to deal with. It's like four games, 
but either like it's all on the same night, so like three in the same night, and then one more, or like two on this day, two on this day. And I hate being forced to put somebody in that I really want to put in. And I just didn't want to give that to somebody because I'm not that kind of person. I'll be honest, their availability. And I knew him and Mare are close. So it's like. Still a big loser, though. I mean, four game, five game availability, that's pretty bad when you got nine it's, games. It's a so, week. And dude, you got to think playoffs, too, right? Like, exactly. I don't want to be stuck putting somebody in two games. I don't want to. <laughs> don't worry, too, son. You don't have to worry about that. I, I think I think of my playoffs. But I mean I do that too. When people give me five game availability, I mean look at the look at this right here. Look at this bar. What does that say? I yell at people, not just when they lose, but when they give me shitty availability against the five worst teams. I yell. All right. Enough for trades now. I have one final thing for this wow, show. Oh fuck. <laughs> Was that the witch? <laughs> Goodness gracious. You're gonna Holy hurt Christ, that fucking hurt, dude. Yeah, looks like the whip got him good. Yeah. She caught you from another room, my man. All right. So this announcement has to do with the All-Star game for this season. So for the All-Star game this season, I haven't decided on an exact date yet because I have to look at the calendar because I know American Thanksgiving is coming up and there's other things to factor in. But we've come up with another different plan to incorporate what we did last season, which we found out, found went very well. And Stoner's um, awesome idea that he wrote in the ch- in the forums, so that we incorporate both of them. So here's what we had planned, and I'm going to share that now, and then I'm going to be writing a forum post uh, later this weekend about it, probably tomorrow, if not Monday, about it as well. So the first part of it is that I will be messaging every GM of the 31 teams and asking them to nominate six players, one per position with a maximum of one manager to play in the all-star game. So I did that last season. I met, I messaged every single GM, asked them to nominate six players, one per position with one manager maximum. And, and then we would put them in a document and, together. And to make that clear, it's six players from your team. Yes. From your own team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like a 30 roster. Second is that we will be naming the GM of each first place team in every division an all-star captain for their division. So they will be the captain for the division. So, for example, at the moment, Lehigh Valley is the leading team in the East Atlantic. So Horvat would be the all-star captain for the East Atlantic division. Same thing for fourth line being that for the West Central and so on and so forth. Third point is that the GM would then pick their all-star team from the names that the, of all the players in the division that were nominated with a maximum of two players per team but the GM himself can also choose whether they want to play in the game or if they don't want to play in the game now is that so for, would that be two players so like Horvat can only choose one player from Lehigh or two more so exactly so at that point it would be like as you said, Horvat being the GM for or the the captain for the division, he could choose two guys from um, Providence, two guys from Springfield, and then have him play, and then choose another player from his team. There's your six guys. It doesn't represent all three, like all the teams in the division, but it allows him to put out the best roster he possibly can while trying to incorporate as many teams as he can. And then people still get nominated, right? So they still feel like. Yeah. The fourth one is that there's going to be two separate awards this season. So once you are nominated by your GM, so those six players per GM, is that you're automatically going to get an award for being nominated. So there's going to be 186 players that do get awards for being nominated to the All-Star Game. So we're handing out participation trophies? Yeah, that's that's so – that was the only thing for me. That's so many. Like, it's a lot of awards, but people complained about not getting trophies last year if they didn't play, so... That, that's the thing. There's going to be two different awards. It's one for being nominated to the game, and then there's one for actually playing in the game. So, there's, there's going to be some people that get two awards, obviously, because they got nominated. And so, like, playing. all-star nomination, then, like, all-star award. Yeah. yeah. So, all-star nomination and all-star game participation. Okay. So and, and because... Some will have one. And because people complained about bias from us, we're not even going to leave it up to us. We're going to name four captains we have nothing to do with. 
yeah. and that captain does it. Exactly. And then last but not least, it's going to be the same type of formatting as last season where we had incremented game time. So it's going to be a 9 p.m. game, a 9.45 p.m. game, and a 10.30 p.m. game. Again, on a date to still be decided. So that way we can have streams and that we can watch the games and kind of get them together on time and working them out. But that's also where having the uh, divisional captains as well kind of helps us out because they're coordinating and building their own team. To be as competitive just as possible. Sure it all runs smooth. <clears throat> exactly. Ooh. So we kind of have a gist of it. Like that's we have an actual established plan this season that there's like no gray area, but like us being biased about it. All we're doing is we're picking the GM of the division, and that's already given to us as number one team in the division. That GM gets rewarded as being the all-star captain. And then all we do is just gather the names and send them to the respective We're coordinating. Captains. We're coordinating. Mm-hmm. So, Pay no attention. Your traffic controllers. Ooh. All we're doing is handing out awards and coordinating everything. So I'm looking forward to playing my third straight all-star game. It's going to be great. <laughs> Because nobody else in Tucson could possibly make it. Hey, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not as bad as it seems, okay? So shut your pie holes, okay? So wait, 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 wait. You have to have somebody from a certain team now? No, 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 no. The, the th- you don't have to have it. Like, what, the problem we had last year and people complained about is we had people from, like, last place Syracuse playing. Like you don't have to pick somebody from Syracuse. It's six players max. Or oh. seven players. So you can, so hypothetically, you could do, like, so GM, one player from their team, two from another team, and two from another team. So, for example, for your division, it could be if you decided to play as the GM, it could be you and another player from your team, two from Cleveland, and two from Colorado. That's it. So you could pick yourself to center. You could pick your goalie because he's one of the best goalies in the league if that's your thing. Or you could pick the two wingers that are the first line for the second place team in the division. And then you take the two best team from the next team. Oh, that's cool. Kind of cool. So I have, I have, so here's, here's my other thing. So if I don't want to play in – if I, so I'm just saying myself just because easier to ask. So if I'm, in, if I'm in it and I don't play, I can still play two players from my team? Yes. Because yes. okay. you're just coordinating it as the captain slash GM of your divisional team. But then at that point, if your team won and then they went to the finals and your player didn't, couldn't play anymore, you can't just jump in and sub in. You'd have to find another – yeah, so your subs can't be from one of the teams that have two players on that team already. Yeah. Even if that player is subbing for a player that you picked from the team. You know, you know what we're saying, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. It'll all be in writing for you very soon. Yeah. Yeah, if you're confused, I'm, I'm sure some of you are. Words are fun. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I'll try and make sure that it's a lot more clear than apparently the rule book was to that guy who doesn't know how to talk to Boggs. <laughs> doesn't know how to read rules. No, he just was he banned for that? No, I don't think so. You can't be. But I, I will make sure that it, it says that cool. CHLers cannot ECU to the All Star game, and that NHLers can't ECU to the All Star game, and that PSN kids can't ECU to the All Star game. Yeah, all those. Don't points. worry, we got. I'll, I'll make sure confuse that. me. I can't read right. <laughs> Can someone tell me what this says? Can you explain it to me there, Sonny? Like, who wouldn't are, want to be a real runner, really? These words are making my brain hurt. <laughs> I want to know what goes on in your guys' parties, honestly. You don't, of, you know. I'm assuming it's a lot of yelling at Dudley for not winning face-offs. Or, or no, I'm not playing five, center this year. Or not, this, scoring. not playing center this year. Well, maybe that's the issue. The, no. Dudley takes connection. face-offs when we go down five on three. No, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like notorious. I want I want your segment of life of a Tucson Roadrunner. Oh, jeez. Now you see, now we have to start winning so we can shut all of you guys up. Yeah. So, it's it's yeah. about to happen. It's going down, boys. Yeah. Tucson. Tucson, Tucson I know this week. Are Maybe you gonna put a, are you gonna play with the paper bag on top of your head? Well, I don't suck. <laughs> well, I feel like that's how he's been playing the last couple of days. I wear it backwards. I can't see anything. <laughs> There's no eye holes. Oh, I didn't know you were playing like the Don Miguel from Syracuse diving all over the place. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know what's going on, but we're we're gonna make a run here. You just watch. Everyone, hold on to your hats or your bags or your paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Oh man. Uh.
without further ado, um, that's it for this week's episode. We'll catch you guys next week. For Can I just say two. one more thing before we go? No. <laughs> I, I'll, we'll allow it. All right. And we're out. Peace out, guys.